Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, Malvina. Hello. This is the beginning of Malvina's mock test video, and I'm, my apologies, this camera angle, unfortunately, the camera overheated. We had quite a lot of sun earlier. But more importantly, what just happened, Malvina? Yee, I passed. <laughs> I passed my practical test. You did. After a failed mock test. <laughs> ah, so if everybody wants to watch the mock test, that's coming up after this. So this is a little intro. So, Malvina, tell me more. What did you do to prepare? How did you pass? How was the driving test experience overall? Well, <clears throat> after failing the mock test, I, come, I decided to come down a bit and um, concentrate more, focus. I was nervous, but uh, I made it, and um, yeah, here I am. <laughs> here you are, and you passed! Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, the experience, the test, the route, anything that was sort of memorable or highlights or yes, important? Um, luckily, um, the my route was with... Um, 30 mile per hour, 40 mile per hour, and uh, the two big roundabouts uh, through Stalmo and then backwards. I think um, the um, examiner took me to do the two roundabouts and then back again, <laughs> and then go again <laughs> on the same roundabout. So I think he knew that I was struggling at the roundabouts, <laughs> but I made it. <laughs> you did. Um, just as a, a little information before the driving test, yeah. which you just passed, and we did a mock test, which wasn't as successful, yeah. but it was definitely a good experience before yes. going for the real test, yeah. and people that watch it will know why, and they'll get all that information. Okay, so now, how were you feeling if zero was, oh, I'm completely calm, zen, meditating on a mountain somewhere, and 10 being... Like you're jumping out of an aeroplane and scared for your life. Where were you on that scale before taking your driving test? I think uh, the, at some point the landing with the parachute. <laughs> and the same for the mock yeah. test video? Um, at the mock uh, test, I was like just about to, to jump from the aeroplane. <laughs> I think you wanted to go home at some yeah, point, didn't you? Yeah. So it's interesting to see how people deal with this kind yeah. of stress. Which... So it's really worth to have a mock test before. Uh, yeah. You because that gives you the, the, that situation like you're in the exam. It is, and isn't it? You can then calm down a little bit, see where you are um, concerned the most. And Would you say, just quick question, would you say when you were doing the mock test video and the cameras are on and they're filming you, would you say that's the same level of pressure as the real exam, more, less, or...? I think it was, uh, was more the mock test. Oh, you're because, more nervous on the yeah, mock test, yeah. okay. Because then I decided to come down a bit, mm -hmm. and I concentrated more, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, snack helped me a bit. <laughs> oh, you had some chocolate, coffee, yeah. we go and went and got a coffee, didn't and, we? So that's um, good. Yeah, there was some point, at some point I thought, oh, maybe I've done a mistake, but... Mm -hmm. um, it seems like I haven't, because <laughs> there were um, I was turning left, and uh, there was uh, park cars, another car coming, and then I decided to wait instead of going. Okay, yeah. So then I explained myself saying, "Well, it's a bit tight, mm -hmm. just in case," because I wasn't sure that was the right thing mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. But that's what I felt. All right, nice. So, and you yeah. were successful. Yeah. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. All right, so everybody that wants to see Malvina's mock test, that's what's coming up next. <laughs> and um don't laugh too hard <laughs> <laughs> all right stay safe hello today crew and welcome malvina malvina hey. has a driving test coming soon so just before we're going to do a mock test how are you feeling excited i'm feeling hot <laughs> and sweaty because i just ran um so you're excited all right that's yeah. nice okay um so could you fill us in what have you been doing in order to get ready for your driving test I've done a lot of uh, practicing, mm -hmm. a lot of lessons, mm -hmm. driven with my husband, uh, with my car, so yeah, I, I feel ready. <laughs> yes, Malvina's definitely ready. Okay, so Malvina's going to be doing a mock test now. All the minor or, sorry, driver faults advisory will be up here in, e sorry, yellow. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I left out the green bit, but we'll come to that. Um, <laughs> all the serious or dangerous driver faults. Red. Oh. <laughs> and then, yeah, any green or good points will be up here in green. 
I think that run fried my brain. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna be driving for about 45 minutes and uh, taking in different various road conditions. Uh, follow the road ahead at all times yeah. unless road markings or signs tell you otherwise. If I need you to turn left or right, I will tell you in good time. We're not gonna use the sat nav on this route. Malvina's recommended that she would like to practice the narrow roads, yes. is that correct? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna give Malvina a, a, a naughty little route here. Okay. Okay, there's especially one point that I'd like to highlight, um, which we'll do on the video, okay? okay. So um, if you're ready, we'll be doing your independent drive, okay, as following signs. So we'll start that shortly, but for now, I'd just like you to follow the road ahead and I'll give you directions as we go. When you're ready, drive on. Here Malvina is off to an excellent start, doing her basics. This is the POM routine and the O part is what's really nice from Malvina. You'll see this throughout the video. So she's making effective O for observations, effective observations before moving away, checking the least dangerous side to the most dangerous side, signaling and moving off. Malvina, at the end of the road, I'd like you to turn right. On this video, we're really going to talk about a lot of the good stuff as Malvina has very good foundations or basics as I referred to them earlier. Remember the POM, if you're new to driving, this will be new to you and POM is before you move away, be in a parked car or reversing. POM stands for prepare, observe and move. The next routine is MSPSL. This is for approaching junctions as you see Malvina doing next. And then I'd like you to take the next road on the left. Mirrors, signal, position, speed, look, MSPSL, is when you approach a junction. You must follow this routine and check your mirrors roughly 10 car lengths from the junction, shortly after signal accordingly, position into your lane, and then slow down. Look to see if it's safe and turn when it's safe. And Malvina. Yes. I'd like you to find a convenient place to pull up on the left. Well, it's not really convenient because it's a curb. So, I think I'll just keep driving. Okay. Any convenient places further down the road, it's up to you. I'd like to find one if you can and pull over and stop on the left. If we have time to rewind this video, we will see that Malvina's intentions were good. When she was first asked to pull over and stop on the left in a convenient place, she went for the section of road that was not obstructing traffic or visibility and went to pull over and stop on the left next to Ray's curb, not blocking or obstructing a driveway. This is a perfect place to pull over and stop on the left and looking ahead for lampposts or trees can identify sections of the pavement where it's raised. Any reasons why you can't pull over somewhere here? Because it's a curb. And the so visibility be... is not too bad, yeah. you can see. Yeah. I'm not going to block the way, is it? Yeah. What do you think? Is there enough space for this van to pass you? <coughs> yeah. We're about to find out, aren't we? <laughs> okay, all right, that's it. I just wanted you to do your pull over and stop on the left when you're ready. Drive on. At the end of the road, turn left. Okay. Oh, this will be interesting. Yeah. So we're going to do this as your manoeuvre. Is that okay with you? Like manu I want you to reverse into that driveway for me, please. Yeah? No. <laughs> Look how hard of a job he's having. Can you imagine yes, trying to do that? I don't think so. Yeah, hopefully he'll be finished soon. I hope so too. <laughs> me and Malvina both desperately need a coffee, by the way. Yes. <laughs> so we'll be finishing by a coffee shop, just to let you know. Yeah. Okay, do you remember the directions, Marvina? End of the road, turn left. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. After a lovely mirror signal position speed look routine, as we're seeing here from Malvina, we do our double check, right, left, right, always double check in the right, and then we spot this car. Now this is where we need to be on the steering, keeping complete control and adding the accelerator. Instead, Malvina oversteers seeing that car on the right and this is marked as observations and receives a serious driver fault and then the second driver fault here is a dangerous driver fault where Malvina oversteers to the left 
She's afraid of hitting the pavement. We want to accelerate to gain distance from the vehicle that we haven't seen clearly, hence the first serious driver fault. And now we jam the brake on, coming to a complete stop, which makes the vehicle behind slow and stop. Luckily for us, they were paying attention and there was no accident. However, this is a dangerous driver fault for jamming the brake on and adjusting our speed rapidly. Any rapid changes of speed or direction are very high risk situations and I would suggest avoiding this, especially on your driving test. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a fail. What happened? Well, um, this car came. I got uh, the steering uh, was too <sighs> from one go. <laughs> like you to take the next road on the right. This is Cheney Street. It's a very narrow road with no pavements for the pedestrians. So be cautious and apply the two golden rules. Less space, less speed and less sea, less speed. If you feel the road is too narrow and you need to come to a stop, make sure you stop where there's a place for the oncoming traffic to still continue to pass your vehicle. Taxi. Yeah. <laughs> Stay focused, keep yeah. calm, carry on. When driving, if you had a vehicle following closely and continuously flashing their lights at you, what would you do? Remember the official reason for flashing the lights or using the horn is to make others aware of your presence. I'd like to take the next road on the left, please. Do you believe? The reason why the vehicle behind is flashing their headlights is to make us aware of their presence? Or could there be an alternative reason? Everybody always does this turn super slow. I think it's because of the uphill. Yeah. So for people that are in a manual car, just be careful with your clutch control and probably use second gear, but make sure you don't go too slow. Otherwise use first gear. And that will help you. Soon we will find out what Stalky Jag wants. But first, this situation is super important. And Malvina does an excellent job of keeping a safe position to the left. Avoiding her going too far over to the right and into any oncoming traffic. Okay, Malvina, I'd like you to find a safe place to pull up on the left. I think he wants to speak to us. Would you roll your window down for me, please? You can have your keys to your petrol in, your, in the side of the car. Interesting. Oh, that's the camera. Sorry? That's a camera. What, on your key, we? Yeah. Petrol. Yeah. We don't have a key. We don't have a key for our petrol. It's a, it's a camera. Oh, is it? Yeah. Sorry, Thanks for letting me know, though. Done that. Cheers. Right. Thank you. Otherwise, you'd lose them. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Right, you, you'll be on YouTube now. <laughs> okay, thank you, Malvina. Right, um, just as you pull up here, just stop here for me. Okay, we're going to start your independent drive. All right? You want some cool air? Remember how to use the vents? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right, so we're going to drive on. I want you to remember these directions for me, okay? We're just going to do a set of directions. End of the road, turn left. Then... Okay. Immediately turn right. Then take the third road on the right. Would you be able to repeat the directions for me? I already forgot. <laughs> already oh, forgot? Yeah. yeah. I'll it's just mention them now. again then. Yes, yeah. please. End of the road, turn left. Yeah. Then immediately turn right. Then take the third road on the right. Okay, turn left, then immediately right, and then turn third uh, lane uh, on the left. Right. right. Oh my god. One more time? <sighs> yeah. For YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the directions, please? Um, at the end of the road, the, the, turn left. Good. Then turn right. Good. Immediately. And then mm -hmm. turn right. Left. Third. Third. Road right. on the right. Third. 
Okay. If you're not sure, you can ask. I will give you the directions. All right. Yeah. When you're ready, drive on. Oh my God. It's okay. You'll pass the real test. Don't worry about yeah, this. Yeah, all right. I hope so. A bad dress rehearsal makes for a good play. Yeah. All right. Can we hear a ticking? Yeah. Lovely. Refocus and remember those directions now, please. I remember every single time where I went to take a driving test, including qualifying to do this job, and even after qualifying, we get called in to do check tests, I'm always incredibly nervous. My palms are sweaty, there's butterflies in my stomach, and don't ask me why, I constantly keep feeling like going to the loo. If there's anybody else that has that last symptom, please share in the comments. It's extremely weird feeling. However, the best thing for me to do is acknowledge that I'm nervous, go with an open mind, plenty of practice, and do my best. These beautiful flowers again. I know, they are beautiful, but they're very tall. At this junction, we must peep and creep, especially as Malvina's just done a self-commentary about the flowers on the right, which are obstructing her view. If you find self-commentary relaxes you, you can use this, especially on your driving lessons. Here we are moving out, peep and creep, which means we're moving out slowly, creeping, and peeping means we continue with our observations. We are now using the correct section in the middle, this box junction here for right turns only, to turn right into this side road. This type of junction is called a staggered crossroads, and now we are going to take the third road on the right. Let's count them as we go. So the, the third row you said uh, left, right? Right, yes, please. So that's the first. Yeah. I'll buy you a nice big coffee after this, <laughs> Marvin, okay? Thank okay. you. For the UK driving test, road safety is most important. And missing a direction is okay. Turn hard. Then the road, yeah? Can do, yeah. Golly gosh, Malvina has gone and turned left instead of turning right. If you counted the third road on the right, congratulations to you. It is common for people to accidentally get confused on their driving tests, and sometimes your examiner may remain quiet, as I have done. The reason for this is because Malvina has remained a safe driver, although she is going a different direction. And remember, safety is more important than direction. Okay, Malvin, I'd like you to take the next road on the left, please. The UK driving test will consist of roughly 20 minutes of independent driving. So whether you're following signs or sat-nav, if you go a different direction at any point on your driving test, your examiner will need to give you a new set of directions. So listen closely to your examiner and do your best to follow the new directions. So we've gone a little bit off route. Yeah. That's fine. I'll just give you directions from now on, okay? When learning to drive, to increase awareness, planning and reaction times, apply the top two rules of driving. Less space, less speed. Less see, less speed. Sunshine's coming out for you. <laughs> Have you got sunglasses? Uh, yes. Good. And for anybody that's watching, you're allowed to wear sunglasses on your driving test. So as we've noticed, even though this road may be a maximum of 30 miles an hour, an appropriate speed for the less space, less speed, and the less sea, less speed, you know, we've got lots of obstructions here, parked cars, reducing the width of the road and the visibility, we are doing very gentle speeds. As you can see here, there's no other way around this situation, and to keep proper control, we have to apply those two golden rules. Okie dokie. Right, um, at the end of the road, turn left. Whether it's our first driving lesson or we have more experience, it's really important to follow rules and routines, and perfect practice with repetition will give us perfect results. I wish that my driving instructor would have instilled into me routines. He didn't even teach me, well, anything apart from shout at me and hit me around the back of the head. So, my advice to you is, follow routines no matter where you get them from and you'll get better results. 
and like to find a convenient place to pull up on the left. A good driving test tip is to look for lampposts or trees when trying to identify a convenient or safe place to pull up on the left. Spotting trees or lampposts, there will most likely be raised curb and this may be a convenient and safe place to pull over on the left. The bus was coming to speed. He's driving, he's doing his job. Okay. Drive on when you're ready. We now see Malvina doing her foundations. Remember, the basics, that's the P-O-M routine before moving off. And if you want to simplify it, you can put this down as just prepare and observe. Rewind the video and you'll see Malvina prepare the car by pushing down on the right lever, which puts this vehicle into drive. If you are using a manual car, then you'll need to press the clutch down and select first gear. I recommend you find your biting point and this is your full preparation. If you want to add, I recommend the signal, indicator or trafficator, depending on what you call this. I believe this is part of the prepare part of the routine. As if there are any other road users that come along, seeing that signal will benefit them. Remember to make effective observations and then move off. At the roundabout, I'd like you to take the second exit, turning right. Now we see Malvina do her fantastic routine of approaching junctions. And this is mirrors, signal, position, speed, look. And I'd like to talk about the speed part, as this really is the secret to approaching any junction. Providing we approach at an appropriate speed, that's roughly running to jogging to walking speed about 20 meters from the junction and stopping if it's necessary, then all junctions and controls, signals, mirror checks, the whole kit and caboodle is usually followed in naturally. So remember, the foundations to your approaching a junction is part of the mirror signal position speed look routine and that is the speed part. Approach an appropriate speed from running to jogging to walking and stopping if it's necessary. This will allow you to do the early vision, early decision and it will increase your skills and making progress if it's safe to do so. Marvina, yeah. when it's safe, I'd yeah. like you to show me how you would turn on the dipped beam headlights. Thank you very much. And we'll do a double barreled because I didn't ask you your tell me question. Would yeah. you be able to tell me where would you find the correct tire pressure and what you need to check the pressure? The correct tire pressure will find in a car manual. Good. And uh, it's 1.6 millimeter, no cuts and no, no bulges, uh, okay. bumps. No. What do you use to check the tire pressure? Uh, the special instrument. Uh, mm -hmm. That's fine, thank you. Gauge. We're going to go to Northwood. It's at the top. It's the first roundabout turning right. So this is the first roundabout turning yeah. right. And then when you reach the second roundabout, turn left. Malvina is on fire here and does an absolutely fantastic job. Her approaching speed here, the foundations, is roughly jogging and allows her to do her early vision, early decision and identifies that the cars on the right that have priority are in the lane that will cross her path and she makes the correct decision and stops. Here Malvina is amazing and she has a blue light situation. She pulls over and stops and creates space for the ambulance to pass. Malvina follows the correct procedure and stops on the left in a safe place allowing plenty of space for the emergency services to pass. This is an absolutely outstanding job. Okay, thank you very much. Just follow the road ahead. Listening to your comments, I've added this camera angle of the speedometer. Let me know if it's working for you or if you have any more suggestions for future videos. What's that? Oh my god. What's that all about? Uh, I was saying all the story, tire pressure, I confused with the... Yeah, it's okay if you mix yes. two questions together. It's alright. You get the answer out eventually, don't you? Yeah. 
Yeah. So we examine this one here. They understand that people are going to be nervous when they're going to a driving test, and you know sometimes we get confused, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Turning right, please. So for Malvina's tell me question, I was just reassuring her that it's okay if you mix your words up. As long as you try to get the message across to the examiner, this is most of the time acceptable. So it's important for the show me question to know that if we don't attempt to do this or we do this in a dangerous manner, we can receive a serious or dangerous driver fault for the show me question. Many people do consider that you can't fail for your show me question, but to the contrary, this is an urban myth and you can fail for not attempting or doing your show me question in a safe manner. Now earlier we talked about the naughty bit of the driving test. This is it. It's a very blind corkscrew bend and we must use our speed appropriately. So I hope that camera angle helps. Malvina's roughly doing about 10 to maybe even five miles an hour when we're approaching a blind bend. And it goes back to those two golden rules. Remember, less space, less speed, less see, less speed. And this is the ideal situation to apply both of those rules to give us a higher chance of keeping a safe control of the vehicle and not having any sudden surprises around the blind bends. Well, this is a very narrow road. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes it's uh, best to be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'd like to take the next road on the left, please. Malvina's steering and control as she drives round this long left bend is excellent. Maintaining a nice safe position, not getting too close or hitting the pavement. It's important that we maintain a safe distance from the pavement, especially in long left bends. This is very common for people to get too close to the actual tip of the corner, which is called the apex. What I mean is when people are steering through a long left bend and applying the left steering, there is a point where we may get too close. And that point is the tip of the corner, which is called an apex. So be careful when you're steering around a long left bend to maintain a safe gap from the pavement throughout the bend. How are you feeling? Better now. <laughs> After that big mistake, I feel better. Good, yeah. <laughs> it's good that these things happen ahead of time. Yeah. And we learn from them. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> I won't repeat the mistake. Well, how likely is it for you for to, to forget that scenario? I don't think so. I will forget it. <laughs> yeah, so it's a good lesson, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. He's gone. I told him to park it. What is it? <laughs> All right, he's sacked. That's it. Okay, at the end of the road, I'd like you to turn left, please. to take the next road on the right. This next junction is what's referred to as a triangle. Read the road markings and see the single white line. This is the entry point to the next road on the right. We must maintain the left, keeping a safe position in case of any oncoming traffic. Nice lean and look. Find a safe place to pull over on the left. On a driving test or driving lesson, you may hear your examiner or instructor refer to a reasonable distance from the left. How far is a reasonable distance from the left, you may ask? Well, I'm about to show you. You see the drain here on the left? That is a reasonable distance. And if we are any further than a drain width from the pavement, we are too far. And we may receive a serious driver fault as this would obstruct the main road traffic. I'm glad to see that Malvina has realized this and she edges forwards to adjust her position. Lovely, thank you. What we're going to do is your maneuver. Yeah. There's a vehicle ahead of us, it's a yeah. dark Peugeot. Yeah. I'd like you to go and stop side by side with the vehicle and then reverse park. 
within two car lengths and finish a reasonable distance from the curb. There is a driveway there, at least I believe there is. I want you to disregard the driveway on this occasion. That means you're able to stop in front of it for the purpose of the exercise, okay? When you're ready and it's safe, drive on. Okay, thank you. Drive on when you're ready. At the end of the road, I'd like you to turn left, please. And then if you just pull up on the left before the black car, and then just go close to the white tree. You see that white tree on the left? If you can just edge us up towards the white tree, and then stop just before the white tree, that'd be perfect. It's roughly a car length. Okay, um, when you're ready? Drive on, please. Okay, um, we're going to try and be fancy. Uh, I'd like you to go in to the petrol station. Uh, so turning left into the petrol station here. And then left again, it's like a U-turn. So just come round left and left again. Just nice and gentle. Okay. Would you drive round to the right-hand side? See the blue car? Yeah. And just go round past the blue car, past the black car, and just come behind that guy that's just parked there. You see that Honda, the black Honda? Yeah, I think he's living, isn't it? 
All right, so let's let him go. Once he's gone, would you go into that spot for me or that position? That'd yep. be brilliant. Okay, you're all right. They have to have a responsibility to wait for you. And if you're not sure, you can always beep your horn, yeah? yeah? Okay, just go into the yellow part for me, straight ahead, just to the yellow part. Yeah, and then just straight ahead for me. Nice and gentle, just straight. Keep going, a little bit more. All right, never worked. Sorry, I was gonna try and get the car to park us in the bay, but it didn't work. That's fine, just switch the engine off. Do it next time. Okay, that's the end of your driving test, Malvina. They're so cheeky. Yeah. What are you looking here for? What's this telling you? Yeah. If I pass or not. <laughs> and? Um... and? Can you tell? I don't know. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise you would have been like, yes. Okay, so it's the end of your test. Yeah. How do you feel it went? Quite um, difficult. <laughs> okay. Because of the nervousness. Yeah. So what was the difficult bit? The whole thing, certain points? I think uh, being nervous uh, makes it much more harder and lose your focus and do easily mistakes, okay. which I shouldn't do. Yeah, yeah, things that you wouldn't normally do, yeah? Yeah. All right, would you like me to go over the results for you? Yeah. Okay, That's so <laughs> do you feel like you passed? I don't think so, no. Okay, why? Because of that... Um, Turning right, yeah, thing. literally uh, left, yeah, left. that was it. We got a little bit confused with some directions, and some of the times the distance when you're pulling over on the left is a little bit big, wide. Uh, you did get it closer, but sometimes maybe a little bit wide. So just try and make sure that you get a little bit closer to the left. Um, and yeah, I only gave you two marks. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're both serious and dangerous marks. So. Um, one serious, I would say, would be the observations when you went out of the junction, okay? So you went out of the junction. This is something that will really help you, by the way. Yeah. You've gone out at the right time. No one was there. Yeah, but there was a red car was coming or something. Yeah, so there was a black vehicle coming on the right-hand side as you've gone to turn out. Now, that's fine. But what do we need to do at that point if we notice a, a vehicle on the main road following us and it's got a higher speed than us? Just keep going. Yes, keep going, increase uh, the speed. Yeah. At that my point... My steering was uh, messed up. Uh, okay, all right. So the steering was too much, maybe? Yeah. You thought they needed to slow down to straighten the wheel, so you weren't able to accelerate at that point, yeah? yeah? Um, that point there was a confusion, I don't know if it was a confusion actually, because it sounds like you actually did want to brake, you did want to slow down. Um, I thought it was confusion because at that point that's where I would have been accelerating, but I do understand if you were steering full lock left or a lot of steering to the left, accelerating would have put you on the pavement. Yeah. So at that point you, you put the foot brake on, it was hard, so the vehicle behind us had to stop. And then that would be a dangerous driver for, for, you know, braking too harshly. So that's gone down as your control uh, for the brake, foot brake. Okay. So we've got the one for the observations, junctions, observations, and just try and increase your speed. You could put that down as response to other road users if you like. And control, foot brake. That's it. I haven't marked you down for anything else. Excellent mirrors, excellent signals, good control of the vehicle. I'm very happy. Just unfortunately, you had a little hiccup, that's yeah. all. But like we said, it's good that these things happen now. Yeah. It's really good. By the way, Malvina, the person that told me, uh, a student of mine, uh, she told me that her grandma said a bad dress rehearsal makes a good play. I really like that. We'd never been to her driving test center. Literally just before her test, we did a mock test. She got like seven or nine tra dangerous and serious driver faults. And then she passed a real driving test. So you got a couple in one spot for a little small hiccup. She got many over a long period of time in very different situations and still passed. Okay? Yeah. So don't be disheartened. You're definitely a good safe driver. 
just had an unfortunate little hiccup there on your mock test. A lot of pressure on you, and that pressure will be on you for your test as well. Even though you won't have cameras, you're going to have that presence, aren't you, yeah, and that yeah. official figure there, and it just puts us on a little bit high alert, doesn't yeah. it? Okay, any questions for me? Any comments or tips for everybody? Tell them how to drive, so I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well... Not really, no. I just need to make up my mind. Any advice for people just about to do the driving test? Just don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, call Steve. Call Steve, train. yeah. <laughs> call me, call me Steve, yeah. call me Chris, call me whatever you like. Scott. All right. I've been Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Alvina. Stay safe, Steve.